if I hold my peace, I let your way fight my battles. Victory shall be mine if you hold your peace. Let your way fight your battles. Victory shall be yours. Now you can hear I am not a singer, right? But I love that song. Shalom, shalom, shalom to my sisters. That's my song to you today. If you hold your peace, if we all our peace, and let your way fight our battles victory shall be out. I hope everyone is well. I'm talking about the mouth today. <laughs> I'm talking about our mouth. Oh my goodness. Listen, the last time I came to speak to women and I spoke about adorning and I read First Peter chapter 3 and it said, Likewise ye women, be in subjection to your own men, that if any obey not the word they also maybe without the word be won by the conversation I was like what of the women the conversation of the women while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fair when I said it's like oh conversation women in our mouth you know and so I was like oh father and and that that resonated with my spirit, our mouth. That's what came into my spirit when I read that. So I said, oh, yeah, the next time I'm going to speak about our mouth. Because I know 99.9% .9 of the male populace speak about women in their mouth. How a woman um, like to row and how a woman um, controlling and I know rowdy and all this stuff and how they use their mouth as weapons and I'm raising my hand. See my hand here? Listen, this hit me because I can tell you, I used to tell people my mouth was my weapon. Father, I thank you for doing the work. That was one of the things I told you I'm praying to the Father about some things. That's one of the things I'm praying about, my mouth. My mouth. And I had a friend yesterday who I grew up with him. He told me he has watched my videos. Shalom, shalom. And he said to me, oh, how are we noticing some change? He said, because when we were younger, we went to primary school to get a high school, and I used to say things, and he was trying to be polite. And I was like, man, be real. I am a real woman. No, when I was a little girl growing up, I was, quote, unquote, rowdy, you know? And he said, I used to say things, and, like, I was not concerned about how I said to people. I don't know about that, but I can tell you, if you came at me, I was a quiet person. I am still quiet. But if you came at me, body used to get the shock of your life because my mouth yeah that, my mouth so I could arrive you know and I just had someone ask me the other night um do you think you're rowdy I said no I am not gonna say that I think I'm rowdy um I don't think I'm rowdy I think that I used to be a person that had to defend myself now my manner in doing it was not right um, but of course then I was a child and even now as an adult I still have an opinion that I like to express and that is something that I'm raising my hand father because I am learning and I've gotten better to understand that you don't always have to answer you don't always have to speak this and I've come a long way you would have had to know me when I was growing up to understand how far I've come and we are still speaking from Titus to teaching women the younger women the older women teaching the younger women one of the things that we have to teach our women is to control our mouth you know and so my topic is women our mouth we have to learn to control our tongue and learn to be silent listening is a skill and that is something I have to learn and, and that's the part that I'm really working on on now learning to listen listen to people as they talk listening just listening so you don't just answer because sometimes we just want to give an answer and we don't listen and I'm really trying to learn to listen so pray for sister in that regard and um, I think one of the favorite scriptures that when I'm praying even with my children I pray that father help me to be quick to hear slow to speak and slow to ride because I had a problem with anger 
you know, I had a serious problem with anger that stemmed from a child, and then I got married into the situation. But so it 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 was like when I thought I was healed. Oh. But he asked me, my friend asked me yesterday. He said, when you were married, were did were you the back and forth? Because he's remembering me as a young person. Well, did you have a lot of back and forth with your husband? And I honestly, yes, and I was saying to him, I really could not remember because I could tell you, I'm so grateful to the Father for healing me from my marriage that I don't remember it. After my divorce, I kept reliving it and reliving it and replaying it and talking about it and talking about it. I was bleeding out. And I remember when I could have laughed at something. I was like, thank you, that happened in my marriage. And I could have laughed and on my anniversary, on what would have been an anniversary. My 20th wedding anniversary, listen to me, I cried all day. And then 21, I didn't cry. And I don't remember what comes after that all. I, 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 I know 20, but I remember when it was the 21st, I didn't cry anymore. And I was so happy about that, you know. Um, so... I thank the Father for healing me that I couldn't answer him right yesterday quickly. Other time I would have been able to answer like this. But I prayed about it. I said, Father, was I a back and forth wife with him? And this morning the Ruah reminded me that I was a wife that prayed to be a good wife to my husband. I used to pray to be a good wife. He was very critical of me. Everything I did was wrong. See, it's nothing wrong. I always say people, I have a problem criticizing. Your criticism of me is what I used to make me better. And that's why when someone commented on the post, I said to her, and thank you for your comments. Thank you for everyone that's listening. Um, but I said to her, open rebuke is better than secret love. I don't have a problem with you speaking to me openly and saying to me because I need to know, you know, when you're looking at yourself, you only see good. But it's, sometimes it's not, it's good to see yourself through other people's eyes. Not every time, but it shouldn't always be. If someone only always have something critical to say to you, that something is wrong with that. Right? So I prayed and the Ruah reminded me that I used to pray because he always had something negative to say to me, nothing good. And I used to take it, but my thing was, is there anything good that I've done? But I remember saying to him several times, because I used to get so angry and be so hurt. I said to him one time, several times I guess, you better thank God, he used to say, that I'm saved. I said, because you didn't know me before I got saved. I used to tell him that. But I particularly remember one Sunday morning. I don't know what it was that he was doing, but he used to do a lot of stuff. And I got really tired. And the Holy Spirit said to me, do not answer him. And I was like, you know something? I tired. I tired. I always don't answer. I always not going to answer. I said, I can let him know this morning. And sweetie, I, for a minute, I was unsafe. However long that take, I forget. And I went at him like a cat. I mud my mouth. Listen, we went to church. Because it was Sunday, we was getting ready to go to church. Could you imagine? And we went to church. And when at the end of the service, when the pastor them say, if you need prayers, my husband, like, he ran up to the altar, literally, like, he ran to the altar, and he almost fell under the altar. You know, they had those portable altars, milk, makeshift, ship, all, you know, the altars that you have to put together. Charlie, like, he was going underneath then, and he act like someone was beating him, and he, and I sit in my chair, and I was like, what is this? You think this man for real? And this is early in our marriage. And I sit there and the Holy Spirit said to me, that's why I told you not to say anything. And I'm like, what? We were married for a couple months. And I was like, what? So I was just still learning. And I was like, what? He behaved like that? Like I was, you know, you would have someone who this woman then. And the thing about it is, this was really his church. So the people in the church knew him to be this quiet man and, and a good Christian man. So it is now he married, he trying to make it out that he married this cantangorous knife because one of the pastors used to say wives they were not wives they were knives and that's the image he was trying to portray of me but like I tell you I learned from that experience I learned I'm a quick learner buddy every time he came after me after that I'd come at me because I know now you're going to play victim in the church I used to not say anything it used to be hard and I used to pray and ask the father to help me and the Holy Spirit used to say give me your mouth and so I used to have to surrender my mouth to the Father, you know, and that is what kept me. I had to keep telling the Father, I give you my mouth. I surrender my mouth to you. So women, that is what we have to do. We have to learn. I know sometimes the situation we're in, 
We got to learn to commit our mouth at those times to the Father and learn to be peaceful and to, and to um, be quick to hear, slow to speak and slow to write. You know, because regardless of what a man is doing, they always look at her mouth and her response. And I know some of our women like myself, we could be very um, assertive. And today, women, we always think we got to go back and go back and go back and forth and back and forth. And that's when my friend was asking me if I was a back and forth wife. But I learned to pray. When I saw the kind of person I was married to, I used to pray and ask the Father, help me to know, let me know when I could talk to him. When I could say something. And what the boy used to do, let him come with his Bible and want to have Bible study or pray about something. And that used to be my time to tell him what I felt and what was on my heart. So... That is my advice to you. And to pray as your mouth to the Father. But I have some scriptures here. Release your mouth. Surrender your mouth to Him. But there's some scriptures that I want to read that's going to encourage us women. Okay? Um, Proverbs 10 and 19. In a multitude of words there lacks not sin. But he that refrains his lips are wise. Proverbs 15 and 1 A soft answer turns away wrath But grievous words stir up anger Proverbs 15 and 4 Gentle words bring life and health A deceitful tongue crushes the spirit Proverbs 6 and 24 Pleasant words are honeycomb Sweet to the soul and health to the bones Proverbs 17 and 28 Even a fool when he holds his peace it is counted as wise and he that shuts his lips is esteemed a man of understanding Proverbs 21 and 23 whoso guards his mouth and his tongue guards his soul from trouble Proverbs 25 and 24 it is better to dwell in a corner of a of the house top than with a brawling woman in a white in a wide house and I hear a lot of men say that once boys and have contentious women that is what they say. Proverbs 25 and 28. He that has no rule over his own ruah or spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. We have to learn to control ourselves. Because when you don't have you don't have no control of your spirit, you're easily open to offense and to when people come at you with everything, anything, you react. You know, and so that's an area that we have to learn to control our own spirit. So we don't just be open to quickly to attack or, you know, respond to attack. Ecclesiastes 5 and 2. Be not rash with your mouth and let not your heart be hasty to harder anything before Elohim. For Elohim is in heaven and you are on the earth. Therefore, let your words be few. James 1 and 9. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man works not the righteousness of Yah. And I had to learn that one. The wrath of man does not work the righteousness of Yah. Proverbs 18, 20 and 21. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Listen, a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. That means what you say. With the fruit that comes out of your mouth, it's going to determine your, your substance, what you have, your environment. You know? And so, with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. So, what you speak, what you say, is going to determine what it is that you have. And so if you don't say nothing good, you won't get nothing good. And so if you say all good things, then you're going to have good stuff. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You understand that? So if you speak in death, that's what you're going to have. And when you speak life, you will have life. Therefore I say unto you, whatsoever shall, whatsoever shall you shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he says and listen I have proven that and I often tell people 
Do not say it if you don't want to see it. Don't say it. But you can have whatever you see. And I experienced that. Okay? And there is another one that I want to read, which is very common. James chapter 3. Behold also the ships which though, though they be great and are driven of fierce winds, they are yet are they turn about with a very small arm whatsoever the governor wills even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things behold how great a matter a little fire kindles and the tongue is a fire a world of iniquity so is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body and set on fire the course of nature and it's it and it is set on fire by Gehanan. For every kind of beast and of bird and of serpent and of things in the sea is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therefore, bless be Yah, even the Father, and therewith curse ye men, which are made after the similitude of Yah. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessing and cursings. My brethren, my sisters, <laughs> these things are not to be. Does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can a fig tree, my, my sisters, bear olive berries? Either wine figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Oh, my sisters. My sisters, my sisters, my beloved. The struggle is real, I know. This is my thing, right here, my tongue. And like the scripture said, animals, all the animals can be tame, but our tongue. And what I have learned is to, at certain moments in my marriage, when I was dealing with it, when I was living with my ex-husband as a wife, and I was trying hard to be a wife, I used to have to tell the father, take hold of my tongue. I remember a time I was walking in his mother's house and she did something. I had one of those mother-in-laws grab the baby. Someone was looking at the baby and she grabbed the baby out of the woman's hand. And the woman looked at me and I looked and I was upset. And I went. And as before I step on the door, the Holy Spirit said to me, give me your mouth. And I was like, Father, because listen to me. I was going at home. And I said, Father... I surrender my mouth to you. And listen, I went in the house and you would think I was mute. I couldn't say nothing good or bad because I know if I had opened my mouth, it was going to be good. So I sat for the whole time and I said nothing. And so there are times when we have to be silent. Don't say anything. We have to learn to listen. We have to teach our young people, young women, learn to listen, to be good listeners. A man wants a woman who's going to listen. Who's going to listen? And too much talk in the scripture tell you isn't even good. And I know there are times that a woman, we need to talk. We need to express ourselves. But we need to be wise and understand when that time is. And that's why for me, I used to pray and ask the Father, let me know. Now granted, your marriage may not be like mine's. I didn't have a quote-unquote husband that loved me. I had a taskmaster, Pharaoh, over me. So I had to pray and ask the Father, you know? After, especially after I began to see how he reacted to me and his response to me, I used to pray and ask the Father, when can I go and speak to him or let me know when to speak to him. So sometimes, depending on your situation, you have to do the same thing. But truly, women, we have to learn to guard our mouth. You know, not to speak all our mind, especially not to speak in anger. And that's something I tried very hard to do and still try not to speak. Because when you say things in anger, you can't get that back. And they say an angry man is speak like what they say, a drunk man speak a sober man tongue it's when you're angry too. And then sometimes when you think about it, you feel sorry. You know, so that's where that scripture about controlling your own spirit. And we gotta learn to speak positive. I know and a lot of marriages is a lot of negativity. But we got to say what we want to see. Your husband may not be the man that you want him to be. But instead of always saying it, he this and he that, he that. Say what you want him to be. Speak what you want to see in your husband. 
speak those things. Even if you don't say, say, sweetie, you so nice, you kind. Don't use the word nice. That's not a good word. You kind, you wise. <laughs> you may be married to Nabal like I was married to Nabal. But say, you are wise. You are wise man of Yah. You are prosperous. Or oh, you are um, highly favored. You walking in the favor of Yah. Your hands are blessed. You are intelligent. You are the most wisest man I've ever known. Speak positive words to your husband and especially of your children. My house, my children can't say negative things. I, from they were small, I used to tell them the same scripture: the power of life and death is in your tongue. You know, so they don't have the liberty of saying um, mean things to each other. And then when they do, they know I come in at them and they have to apologize. I don't tolerate that. You know, and so these are some of the things that we have to really work on. And like I said earlier, I know the battle is it may not be your battle but i know for me that's an area that i'm truly working on you know not answering for every time and i think the father may have come with age but i don't always answer um because a lot of things now do really don't matter but now you know i single but in a relationship is a concern how am i gonna react in a relationship um you know but I'm praying. That's why I'm praying about certain things. Um, and this is one of the things helping me to be a good listener, a good listener, and not always speaking and being so opinionated. I am praying to learn to listen. But that sound, I love that sound. If I hold my peace, because the Rua said to me that to me in my marriage, if you are fighting, why do I have to fight? And I used to hear that song singing in my ears. And this morning, I remembered it again. If I hold my peace and let Yah fight my battles, victory will be mine. So women, I want to encourage you today. Learn to hold your peace. Learn to control your mouth. Learn to be silent. And a tip, listening is a skill. Learn to listen. Let us learn to listen. So, um, be encouraged. Trust the Father with all things. I am encouraged. I am encouraged. I am encouraged. Listen, I am encouraged to know that I'm in my purpose. And, um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's good. But I hope this message, um, encouraged someone to. And the scriptures I will put in the in the description so that you can ponder those and go over those. A soft answer turned to be wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So let us as women, because we are the position that we're in as being our husband's helpmeet. We have to learn and, and we are supposed to win them by our conversation. You know, and especially if women, if you're spiritual, they look at you and saying you're supposed to be and you're supposed to be. So we got to learn to be silent and let the father fight for us. Turn it over to the Ruach. Turn it over to him and let him work it out. And I tell you, it works. I've had to do it and I find, listen to me, it works. Let me tell you a quick testimony. When I was going through with my divorce, I remember my ex-husband kept. Now, I could be honest with you. After we got to the place of the divorce and thing, I wasn't trying to be wife no more. But I wasn't, because my children wasn't interested in having no back and forth with him. But he was contentious and he used to, when I opened my room door, he used to be there standing, waiting for me. And I was tired. And this time, he was coming, accusing me of breaking the mirror on his car. Accusing me and accusing the neighbors. Everybody break this one thing on his car. And I went that Friday morning to go at him. I put men reach out my hand to go on to his go in his room and the Holy Spirit said to me, Do not touch that door. And I cried. I say, Father, you gotta help me. I tired of this. I say, You know I could deal with this man. <laughs> and that's how but I went to service. Listen to me. And the song on the Sabbath was, Is it well? I cried all through that service. Because it wasn't well. 
every time I closed my eyes, I was going at my husband. That's how angry I was. Listen, at the end of the Sabbath, we went home. I met the two tenants sitting on the porch. And they said to me, Miss, you heard from... I said, child, I lift my hands. I said, I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear nothing from him. They said, Miss, they just took him to the hospital. I said, what? They say, Miss, the neighbor from across the street, young man, young son, the neighbor had a young son, came across the street coming straight in the yard and listen I ain't gloating in this but this is how my father dealt with it for me say that young man came in that yard and put one beating on my ex-husband I was like what they say miss that young man pick him up and snap him down and pick him up and I lift my hands and in my head I told them I said yesterday I used to go to the police station every day I said, I just went to the police station yesterday about that man. The police and Elizabeth, they, they know me. Every day I used to go to the police station. Just in case I trip, they would have rackets that the woman was coming every day. And I live my and they say, Missy can't fight. I see only many coming at me. And, and I was like, Father. And the ruler said, I told you, listen, I will deal with it. Just leave it. See, he used to pick at the young man too. And the young man, I, all I said was the, the demons in the young man attacked the demons in him. And the demons in the young man must even stronger, so he beat him. You understand me? And I was like, Father, Father, Father. So my encouragement to you today, release it. It may not be where your husband or whoever is going to get, have that kind of situation. But what I'm saying to you, when you leave it to the Father, He's going to work it out. He can fix it for you. But you got to be in right standing. You got to be in alignment. You can't be the one fighting and want the Father fight for you. Let Him fight for you. You understand me? And when He does it, you can be right there. You can feel a little sorry and stuff, but He can let you know, okay? You see? I can take care of this for you. You understand me? However you decide to work it, let him work it. But don't you be the one going to battle with your man. As a woman, your your responsibility is to go in prayer. Humble yourself, close your mouth, and let the Father fight it for you. See, that's your only woman, that's your only recourse. The Ruah. Let him deal with it for you. So, be encouraged. And... Hold your peace, control your mouth, and let the most die. Fight for you. Let's learn to be silent women. Shalom.